Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I'm continuing my Shuttle Constructed Mars mission. As a reminder, the premise is that instead of building the International Space Station, the shuttle could have been used to build an International Mars mission, uh, in this case at a 28 degree inclination to maximize payload capacity, but of course if you wanted to use more launches you could have done it at 51 degrees so that more nations could participate. This would mostly use real modules meant for the ISS and be tested in low Earth orbit for an extended period of time so it would serve as a space station like the ISS. Eventually though, it would be designed to push out from low Earth orbit using ion engines. This was partly inspired by the fact that for both the Deep Space Gateway and the Deep Space Transport to Mars, NASA plans to use modules identical to ISS modules anyway. So this would basically have skipped a step. These missions were all conducted during live streams on Twitch, and the music is from a shuffled playlist I use on Twitch, so sometimes it fits great, other times not at all. Uh, in this case, we are launching the Quest Airlock, plus a module that has our life support converters, so the water purifier, carbon dioxide removal system, and oxygen generation system, and stuff like that, and backups for those. And actually, even though the life support module is very small, it can counterbalance the Quest Airlock, and so we're gonna put the life support module on one side and Quest Airlock on the other side so that the ship will be balanced. Now, I decided to use a special tug for this. I decided to use the Cygnus spacecraft as a tug. This is Raider Nick Cygnus spacecraft, and it was mainly because he was there during the live stream and practically dared me to use it because it has a horribly long burn time. You can see the stage time there, six hours. Uh, actually, that's because its main engine is weaker than its RCS thrusters. So that little engine there. As you can see, it's not actually bringing us any closer to the station right now because it can't. It's not powerful enough. And so we actually have to phase with the station even more, so here we are. Uh, trying to re-phase with the station to get a closer approach and being very patient about this, taking a lot of fuel. We don't actually burn for the six hours because we're using a lot of that as RCS thrust and the RCS thrusters consume it much faster. But we ultimately use pretty much all of the fuel on Cygnus to try and make this happen. And it also turns out the Cygnus is just not really good at docking really large payloads in front of it. Uh, which I guess is not that much of a surprise, it wasn't meant for that. But it, I mean, it's actually tugging 12 tons in front of it, 6 for the Quest Airlock and 6 for the Life Support Modules. So it's bearing a very heavy burn and we actually decide to use the station to rendezvous with it rather than to use it to rendezvous with the station. So here I am turning Cygnus towards the station uh, and it'll try its best to just hold steady while I maneuver the station closer to it. The station itself, by the way, is currently only controlled by one of my TRS look-alike tugs, though perhaps a little bit better than one of those TRS tugs, and also a reaction wheel, and I think there are some RCS ports around the reaction wheel module. So that's it. But somehow, you can see the little TRS tug there, <laughs> puffing away, but um, yeah, somehow that is better to manage our approach to the Quest Airlock Cygnus spacecraft and all of that than trying to use the Cygnus spacecraft to manage the docking. So here I've actually got the docking port on the life support module targeted and I'm still using the little tug to manage the station's orientation to help with docking. It's sort of crazy but if it works it's not that crazy. So, and in this case, uh, we're closing in very patiently. Of course, if you're going really fast with this, it's not going to work. Uh, we still need to use Cygnus to orient the rotation on the module because these uh, common berthing mechanisms have a rotational requirement. Which is weird because I thought I had docking port snap with that rotation um, on the solar panel, the big solar arrays, but somehow our solar arrays are staggered. They're not quite in line with one another. So anyway, we deposited the life support module. That's that tiny little bump. And now we have to go over to the other side of the station and dock the Quest airlock. Uh, and to do this, of course, I'm actually rotating the entire station to face 
the docking port on the Questor lock. And so here we are. And actually the Questor lock is only supposed to have one common berthing mechanism. The other end is the airlock, but I added another common berthing mechanism so that the tugs could actually tug it in. Otherwise it wouldn't be possible. And you would have to use cannon arm to move it. Anyway, after all that was done, I left Cygnus on the station and brought back the shuttle. Here we are with the retro burn, or one of the retro burns. One of the reasons I decided to pick up this whole shell constructed Mars mission thing was because I wanted to come to grips with the DEQ shuttle in 1.3 and try and make sure it worked properly in Realism Overhaul. And so this gave me a reason to do that and do all the test flights while doing something constructive. And uh, so far so good, we've stopped the engines from blowing up. And actually those engines aren't from the DECU pack, they're from, uh, uh, they're from another pack. I think they're from the real engines pack, I'll have to check. But yeah, previously I had done all my shuttle missions, like for my International Space Station attempted construction, I didn't get very far with that. But that was done with the CSS shuttle in 1.1.3. So, been a while since I've had a functional shuttle. Anyway, uh, it's looking good. The KOS script is obviously doing better at aiming for Cape Canaveral. Uh, though, with uh, empty payload bay currently, it overshoots by a little bit. That's why we're having to do a very drastic turnaround. Uh, though, actually manageable. The nice thing about using KOS, of course, is that it's going to be consistent. And since on every mission during this video, we're going to be bringing back no payload, uh, as a result, we're going to have the same trajectory back every time because we start from the same orbit. I get into a standby or standby orbit in the first place to bring it back. So the same thing will happen every time and I'm getting a whole lot of practice landing it back at the KSC on the shuttle landing facility uh, with this particular trajectory. The problem is that with payload in the bay, it tends to fall short. So here without any payload, it tends to go long. With payload in the bay, it tends to fall a little bit short. Uh, though still, I think I can get it to the runway. The discrepancy uh, makes it impossible to change the script to make sure that we don't go so far. Ow. Uh, that was a harsh landing. I get a little bit better, but not a whole lot better. I need a lot more practice with it. But um, yeah, so I can't easily fix the script right now to get the approaches the same way regardless of the payload in the bay. So I'll have to work on that, but fortunately we are now able to land on the runway and so that's a huge improvement to all the splashdowns in the previous video. And we go to the next mission. This time we're adding one more solar truss to the International Mars mission slash current station in low Earth orbit. And this is, I've dubbed it the A2 truss. Basically uh, the International Space Station as uh, port and starboard for its trusses, but we're not doing it, uh, su uh, putting the trusses side by side, we're putting them in line with the body. So I've gone with fore and aft, and so the trusses are F1, F2, A2, A1, and so there's the A2 truss, and that's how I've decided to go with it, uh, which means that according to my original plans, we actually have another truss to put onto the station after this. But instead of doing that, the final launch of this video will be a Xenon propellant module. And that was just to change things up during the live stream. I didn't want to launch another solar truss immediately. I wanted to launch something else to uh, give us some, some variety. Anyway, uh, so here's the truss. Now this truss is different from the other trusses that we've launched in that it has radiators on it which will be enormously helpful, but also seem to drain a lot of electric charge. So I'll have to take a look at that. So here we are. And here's one of my typical tugs, uh, certainly no Cygnus anymore. We are retiring Cygnus from being used as a tug. And here we are lining it up. Yeah, the tugs aren't great. I still have to have the station turn towards the tugs in order to make it work out and make docking easier, but um, they, they can manage these larger modules okay. And this is a pretty big module, I think uh, it's like 15 tons and the tug itself is um, the remainder of the vessel mass you see there. So about uh, 2 to 3 tons. 
depending on how much fuel it has in it. Okay, we are docking, and there it is. A little bit of management of the rotation, and we extend the solar panels. And I had docking port snap on, I have, you know, uh, witnesses to this, but Somehow, with docking port snap-on, it snapped to the first set of solar panels, but you can see the middle set of solar panels are off. How that works when I have docking port snap-on, I have no idea, but I decided it was too much trouble to mess with it. And you know, quite often in pictures, the ISS solar panels, solar rays are tilted with respect to one another, so I don't feel too bad. Anyway, <laughs> that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So we're retro burning again. I have not figured out how to fix the textures on the on the shuttle. So right now it only shows Atlantis as the texture. I will still uh, post the RO configuration I have right uh, RO configurations I have right now, which originally weren't written by me. I have to point out I'm only modifying the RO configurations, and so you'll get the original work of whoever posted these RO configurations on the DECQ shuttle thread for KSV 1.2.2 and I have modified them to uh, make sure things work as I believe they should. Things I have to fix are the textures uh, so that we can switch textures to other shuttles. I also need to fix the masses but you're probably going to want to get the RO configurations before I do that because uh, doing my calculations, if I set the shuttle to its correct mass, the amount of delta V you have when you launch in the shuttle itself with its own mass is 300 to 400 meters per second. And on the lower end, if you've got payload. So that's not much. Basically, this DECQ shuttle right now has double that. And still, as you can see with our Delta V remaining, we don't have a whole lot of spare. So you're going to have to manage things pretty tightly once I, once I figure I can manage things tightly enough to allow for a heavier shuttle and lower Delta V. I mean, you basically have to reserve 100 meters per second just to come back home. So that doesn't leave you a whole lot to do a rendezvous. They must have been very patient about their rendezvous. Also, need to make sure that the external tank actually brings us to higher orbits. But anyway, a second successful landing. Perhaps a little bit better than last time, but still not satisfactory. And here we go again. This time, like I said, is a xenon tank. It carries 15 tons of xenon. And I believe we need at least three of these. So, this launch, and then we need another xenon tank, and another xenon tank, and then the ion propulsion back end with some RCS and perhaps some additional thrusters to provide quicker thrust when we happen to need that. Uh, so, those are the modules on the back end that we still need. On the front end, I want to put a BA330 from Bigelow Aerospace, that's the inflatable, and so that'll give adequate living space. After that, the actual trans-Mars spacecraft is done. All I believe we need after that are the lander with its transfer stage, and the Orion return vehicle, and its transfer stage. Now, I might review whether that's all we need, and maybe we'll take a few extra launches to add other things to the spacecraft. We may need another launch to get adequate supplies, I'll have to take a look at that. We do have a very good water purification system. It's the water purification system on the International Space Station, which operates at 75% efficiency. And uh, when you take into account the water that we get out of food, it pretty much replaces uh, better than 90% of the water. So basically, you need to take about 10%, uh, probably with some buffer, of what you technically need. So for a three-year trip, we're talking about uh, well, let's say, let's call it a thousand day trip. You're talking about carrying a hundred days minimum, uh, but you don't need too much more than that. The recycling system will take care of it. And here's the little xenon tank. Oh, and as a tug this time, I decided to use a frigate stage. This again instigated by Raider Nick. I totally blame him. Uh, he built the frigate stage 
and the Cygnus, so... Yeah, uh, the downside to using the Frigate Stage is that it has no backward-facing thrusters. In other words, it has no way of slowing down. It wasn't really meant to tug things into dock. It tugs things, but it tugs thing in, things into other orbits. So it's not meant for this, and I find that out a bit too late. To rescue it, I decided to deploy my existing little space tug, but you can see its electric charge is really, really low. I think it's still manageable, and it's recharging there. So I decide I can go ahead and grab the Xenon module from the opposite side of the frigate stage and try and save it like that. We still have electric charge there, but oddly, after I dock and orient, well actually I think I adjusted the docking port snap to save it, and undocked the frigate stage, I couldn't control the RCS, even though it's obviously enabled there. We still have electric charge, but it's not recharging anymore. Having a lack of things that I could use here, I decided to try and dock the frigate stage to the tug to provide extra electric charge and maybe restore its RCS somehow. But I forgot that we can't really slow down with the frigate stage. So bump, and that's an interesting sort of collision. I'm not entirely sure how those colliders work. And after that bump, I cleared the frigate stage because it was headed towards the station. And then I had to retract the solar panels on that side of the station to prevent the now uncontrolled and drifting xenon tank plus tug from smashing those solar panels. In order to solve the whole lack of RCS control thing, I went into the tracking station and came back. And once I came back, I was able to use the RCS and it started recharging the electric charge again. So I was able to control it and bring it into a dock. And so here we are making those very, very careful adjustments with my little tug. And I swear I should just never use any other tug ever again. <laughs> so Cygnus was horrible, Frigate is horrible. Though we did discover at the end of the stream one possible use for Frigate, and you'll see that in, in a bit. But here we are docking, and so that's basically 15 tons of xenon. I forget if that includes the dry mass of the tanks or not. And we're planning to add a total of, well we already have some xenon tanks down the center line on those solar trusses, but we're pl planning to bring two more of these modules up. So solar panels out, radiators out, and the station is recharging. It had been depleted of electric charge and we knew that because the tug had been depleted of electric charge and the tug had been docked to it. Not too sure why, maybe it was because of orientation or something like that, but it's certainly recharging now. It seems to have a pretty large drain on it though um, when it's not recharging, like 20 kilowatts, which should not be the case. So, as I said, we decided to uh, send the frigate stage to the moon and this was again a suggestion by Raider Nick uh, that we could land the frigate stage on the moon. It did have enough Delta V on its own and has quite a lot of Delta V and so but while it was on its way there we had the opportunity to land the shuttle and so here we are bringing it back. We are using the KOS script, expecting the same results because the shuttle is configured the same, empty cargo bay in other words. It does want to pitch down throughout the whole re-entry. In other words, it's supposed to be at 40 degrees, but I've allowed it to pitch down to 37 to manage its uh, approach. And it tends to just hold at 37, so we're gonna have to adjust its expectations and figure out how to get it a little bit more correct because it is overshooting and it doesn't need to pitch down. Pitching down means that it thinks it's undershooting and it isn't. So anyway, something I have to fine tune but here we go. Coming down as before. I'm trying not to pull too many G's this time. Previous times I had pulled like six G's doing this turn. Because uh, at a certain point in the turn, we're going like nearly 2,000 meters per second, so quite easy to pull G's if you use the aerodynamic surfaces at that speed. Also, pretty easy for them to snap off, too. 
but we were in thin air, so Far did not see fit to destroy us. Anyway, here we are coming down. And it's still tough. Uh, one problem here is that we don't have air brakes. The rudder does not split, it does not act as an air brake. So that's one reason why I'm having trouble slowing the shuttle down. If we had air brakes, it'd be a breeze. Uh, that was the main struggle. There are no air brakes. And so, we do have the parachutes though, but, well, parachute, but yeah, no air brakes and that's why I'm having trouble. Well, at least that's my excuse. So the only way to really slow the shuttle down is to pitch up and it's tough. Tough to manage it like that. Anyway, back to the frigate stage, about to impact the moon. We did send it on impact trajectory and here it goes. We're going to aim to do a suicide burn, but it's not going to be really a suicide burn. As you can see su on the suicide burn countdown, we start early. And because of the curvature of the moon, it just doesn't make a very good estimate of it. And we are consistently early. We have plenty of ignitions on this stage. But as it turned out, it wasn't such a dire situation as my I might have thought, because the RCS thrusters are sufficient to land it. <laughs> ah, those are some OP RCS thrusters. But yeah, yeah, the RCS thrusters can land it on the moon as long as it's not carrying some heavy payload. I did want to dispose of it though because this save is solely for the shuttle constructed Mars mission and I didn't want extra craft lingering. So, as we smash it into the moon, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.